Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Very quick diary by Manuel today, uh, just talking a little bit about scanning S3 buckets, making sure that uh, your permissions are all right uh, for your uh, data. Still uh, seeing some leaks uh, being published uh, here and there uh, where uh, companies haven't done that right. So certainly a good reminder to double check if your permissions are set correctly. When we talk about malware infecting uh, routers, we usually talk about malware like uh, Mirai, for example, which infects millions of routers, is very noisy and usually going after fairly simple vulnerabilities and often targeting pretty much unmaintained home and uh, small business uh, devices. Lumen now has an interesting uh, threat that they're tracking that's going after a bit more sophisticated routers. These are Traytech 2960 and 3900 uh, routers that are, of course, exposed to the internet and vulnerable. What's also sort of interesting is Bots like Mirai, they try to infect as many devices as possible, as quickly as possible, which of course makes them very noisy. Lumen only observed about 2% of the total number of routers actually being compromised. So they're more or less targeting very specific routers, like they connected to specific organizations. And then they're not just scanning uh, widely, but uh, they're also installing some stealthy malware that will essentially record packets going through the router. To capture packets, good old TCP dump is used, and then a command control channel is set up on port 8816 in order to communicate with the command and control server. And then again, unlike some of the more commonly seen router malware, uh, this malware is then more inverts focused. It's focusing on systems connected to the network and is trying to enumerate them and possibly launch additional exploits. And now they're calling this hiatus rat and uh, the write up by Lumen also has more details about the command control channel that they observed and how the entire system works. And just as a reminder, make sure your firmware is up to date in your routers. And for example, just got a new vulnerability in Sonic OS, uh, the Sonic wall firewall, apparently the web management interface is affected by a buffer overflow vulnerability. Luckily, according to SonicWall, this will only result in a denial of service. So note an arbitrary code execution and the CVSS score of 7.5. But I proposed it before you probably want sort of at least once a month to sort of have a router patch day and also a router reboot day then to apply any patches that you may have installed. And talking about, well, vulnerabilities with exploits, we do have an exploit now for a vulnerability that uh, Microsoft patched just about a month ago. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in Vert. So really important here, it executes without actually opening the document necessarily. You may just uh, trigger it by, for example, previewing it. The issue is triggered by a malicious uh, RTF uh, document. And well, the exploit is short enough, it fit in a little uh, tweet, at least the Python script that can be used to create uh, this particular exploit document. And Sentinel-1 has a blog post uh, talking about a recent uh, version of Remco's RAT. And it uses sort of an old trick that apparently is still works. And that's uh, appending a space to, for example, directory names like system32 in order to fool users and uh, then uh, bypass user account control. There is no easy way for the user to really distinguish the system 32 that's actually supposed to be there and the system 32 space. So that's how users are tricked into allowing the malware to run. Lots of other neat tricks and the blog post certainly makes a good read with lots of details about this particular malware. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.